This is Patrick Cornelius. Thank you. I went down to the shouting sea, taking Christopher down with me, for nurse had given us sixpence each, and down we went to the beach. The sea was galloping gray and white. Christopher clutched his sixpence tight. We clambered over the humping sand, and Christopher held my hand. We had sand in the eyes and the ears and the nose, and sand in the hair and sand between the toes. Whenever a good nor'wester blows, Christopher is certain of sand between the toes.
Kozakaki on guitar. Nick Vianas on trombone. Gerald Clayton on the piano. This next tune will feature Jason Palmer on trumpet. Where the water lilies go to and fro, rocking in the ripples of the water, lazy on a leaf lies the late king's daughter, and the faint winds shake her. Who will come and take her? I will, I will. S keep still, keep still. Sleeping on a leaf lies the late king's daughter. Then the wind comes skipping to the lilies on the water, and the kind winds wake her. Now who will take her? With a laugh she is slipping through the lilies on the water. Wait, wait, too late, too late. Only the water lilies go to and fro, dipping, dipping to the ripples of the water. Thank you. 
You're listening to The Checkout Live. We're in Boston at Berkeley College of Music, and Patrick Cornelius and seven of his very good friends are commissioning, uh, debuting music. This is the premiere of newly commissioned work, While We're Still Young, based on the writings of A. A. Milne, When We Were Very Young. We just heard Water Lilies and opened up with Sand Between the Toes. Patrick Cornelius, uh, Talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this music. I mean, uh, just hearing those words that were written so very long ago, they still sound, you know, very fresh and very exciting and, and, and convey sort of a sense of abandon. W you know, t talk about reading those words again. Well, um, okay, I have two kids, and uh, I have a four-year-old daughter and a year old son. And uh, when my four-year-old daughter was born, um, my grandmother... Uh, gave me, uh, us as a gift, a copy of um, When We Were Very Young by A.A. A. Milne. And she said that she read it to my mother when she was a baby, and my mom read it to me when I was a baby, and then I read it to my daughter. And um, y you have it exactly right. There's a kind of fresh innocence um, in these poems. You know, it speaks to a part of being a kid that I think we all remember, um, there's something in the, the playful, joyful aspect of it um, that really is timeless. And um, from the very moment I started reading them to Isabella, my daughter, uh, ideas for melodies came into my head. And I was thinking, this is, a, this is something I'd really like to write some music inspired on. And you know how it is. You have an idea for a project, and life kind of gets in the way, and uh, it sits on the back burner for a while. But... Um, when I received the commission from Chamber Music America, that's it was the perfect opportunity to explore this because, as we all know, there's nothing like a deadline <laughs> to get you <laughs> motivated to to do something. So um, that's how it came to be. When you were seeking sources for writing for eight pieces, I mean, were were there things that you listened to, not necessarily to mimic, but just to kind of hear, like the possibilities of well, yeah. you know, eight people playing something together. Well, I listen a lot to, um, the, of course, Gil Evans' recordings of, of ensembles of this size, and um, Benny Golson, Duke Pearson, and then you know larger ensemble stuff like a lot of Duke Ellington, um, and a lot of classical music. Specifically, I drew uh, a lot of influences from French composers from the turn of the century. Uh, there's a lot of Debussy and Citi and, and uh, Ravel in this as well. Um, and uh, a lot of my contemporaries I, I'm very influenced by, actually, um, Alan Ferber and uh, Kyle Saulnier and, um, and uh, many others in New York. But, uh, but I mean, those are, those, that's the sort of music that I've been immersing myself in when, and during the writing process. But it, it wasn't like I was trying to capture any particular musical aesthetic. I was more interested in um, capturing the spirit of each individual poem um, but, um, but you know, vocabulary uh, uh, for writing for this type of ensemble can be like paint on a palette. So I, I kind of used it as such. If you would continue and introduce us to Jonathan Joe. Okay. This is going to feature Mr. John Ellis on the tenor saxophone. <laughs> Among others. Jonathan Joe has a mouth like an O and a wheelbarrow full of surprises. If you ask for a bat or for something like that, he's got it, whatever the size is. If you're wanting a ball, it's no trouble at all. Why, the more that you ask for, the merrier. Like a hoop and a top and a watch that won't stop and some sweets and an Aberdeen Terrier. Jonathan Joe has a mouth like an O, but this is what makes him so funny. If you give him a smile only once in a while, then he never expects any money. I didn't meet the gentleman. But.
Nick Nas on trombone. Gerald Clayton on piano. John Axon Ellis on the tenor saxophone. The Invaders. <laughs> In careless patches through the wood, the clumps of yellow primrose stood. And sheets of white anemones, like driven snow against the trees, had covered up the violet, but left the bluebell bluer yet. Along the narrow carpet ride, with primroses on either side, between their shadows and the sun, the cows come slowly, one by one. Breathing the early morning air, and leaving it still sweeter there. And one by one, intent upon their purposes, they followed on, in ordered silence, and were gone. But all the little wood was still, as if it waited so, until some blackbird on an outpost yew, watching the slow procession through, lifted his yellow beak at last to whistle that the line had passed. Then all the wood began to sing its morning anthem to the spring.
John Ellis, Chase Carney. You're listening to The Checkout Live from Berkeley. I'm Josh Jackson, and uh, here on stage with Patrick Cornelius and many excellent musicians. P Patrick, I mean, I, I often wonder this because this is not the first time that, uh, that a commissioned piece of music has, has been featured on The Checkout. I understand there's a lot of value in, in having your work commissioned. I mean, as an artist, you, you get to have an opportunity that you wouldn't otherwise have, potentially. You get to you know, in a very concentrated amount of time for the execution of this, you know, you get a handful of rehearsals, you know, you get perhaps some kind of live presentation like this, you know, which is a great thing, and documentation thereof. You're going to play this music in New York, then you're going to record it on Sunday, you know. Um, but what is the lasting value for the artist who receives these kind of commissions? What is it that lives beyond that scope of time? Well, um... I mean, this is the first time I've gone through this. Uh, I think Miles has done this before with his, uh, he's got one of these before, so he might be able to answer that on another another time. But for me, I, you know, just the process of going through writing this music has, I've grown so much as a writer. I mean, in fact, I was just talking with Nick as we were, having, um, he said, he hates it when I say this, but I, this is how I think. I, I never really thought of myself as really a composer before. Um, and being able to, well, having the opportunity to put together a project like this with deadlines and a budget and everything really gave me like a real concrete incentive to really, um, you know, try to build some chops, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, to really, uh, to really learn something and to and to to get my hands dirty with process, um, because you know, as I said before, we all have these projects of stuff that we want to get to. Um, but you know, as as life gets in the way with with wonderful distractions like family and and other uh, you know professional opportunities, sometimes we don't always get to do these. And I'm so grateful to Chamber Music America and the Doris Duke Foundation for really providing um, uh, you know a kind of foundation to say, here, this is possible. You can do this um, Here's because the platform. otherwise, Here's a platform. Exactly. Here's a platform, and we're going to support you, and we're going to promote you, and it's. Absolutely astounding, and I've been really so grateful and honored. So please give them a round of applause, everybody. Because, uh, as you can imagine, it is not easy to assemble a cast of musicians of this caliber uh, in one place for <laughs> more than a handful of times. So um, really, uh, really without this opportunity, this project, as you see it here on the stage, would not have come together. Patrick Cornelius joins us, and the commissioned work is called While We're Still Young. It's based on uh, some of the writings in 1924 of A.A. A. Milne, When We Were Very Young. And, and I think about this, you know, it's a very hackneyed phrase, you know, music keeps you young. And I know that there are probably a lot of people on this stage that would say, yeah, I try going from gig to gig all over the world, and it puts a toll on the body. But, but then at the same time, we were talking earlier backstage about people like drummer Roy Haynes, you know, and so many of these people who, you know, there is some sense of vibrancy. What, what is that? What is the core of that, Patrick? What keeps, what about music keeps us young? The audience, the musician. Uh, if I had to answer that, I, I would say that, well, for me, I, when I'm in a situation like this, playing music that I've been working on for a year now, hearing it played by uh, such incredible musicians, it just makes me feel like the same kind of joy as when I first first started, uh, first picked up my instrument and started playing, you know, uh, Oye Como Va in, in contraband down in San Antonio and, or whatever <laughs> we played. <laughs> but I mean, really, honestly, like when we started playing the first two and I was like, this is the biggest probably I've smiled in a long time. <laughs> So I think it's just, you know, uh, just understanding the joy of it. And, and, man, I guess there's no other way of saying it. Inspir experiencing that kind of pure joy that, you know, makes you forget about all the hassle and all the work, hard work that it took to get to this point. Um, that's just it, <laughs> I think. Well, if you would, please continue to transmit some of that joy. Okay. <laughs> we will. All right. All right, this is called Lines and Squares. Whenever I walk in a London street, 
I'm ever so careful to watch my feet. And I keep in the squares and the masses of bears who wait at the corners, all ready to eat. The sillies who tread on the lines of the street go back to their lairs. And I say to them, bears, just look how I'm walking in all of the squares. And the little bears growl to each other, he's mine, as soon as he's silly and steps on a line. And some of the bigger bears try to pretend that they came around the corner to look for a friend. And they try to pretend that nobody cares whether you walk on the lines of the squares. But only the sillies believe their talk. It's ever so important how you walk. And it's ever so jolly to call out, bears, just watch me walking in all of the squares. we come to the final piece of the program <laughs> of the suite. Um, actually, I'm just going to like soak in this moment <laughs> because I've just been really working so hard on this and, um, and it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> but um, before I, I talk about the next piece, I, I want to introduce the band again really quickly. Um, Chief Bear number one on trombone, Nick Vianas. <laughs> Bear number two on tenor saxophone and bass clarinet, Mr. John Ellis. Jason Palmer on trumpet. Miles Okazaki on guitar. Gerald Clayton on piano. Peter Slavov on bass. Kendrick Scott on drums. It's really a special honor for me to be doing this presentation here at the Berkeley College because um, I went to school here. And I was just um, speaking with one of the students here earlier this afternoon when he did a master class. He was saying that he had done his... Um, his recital in 1A yesterday, I think. And I was remembering that I did my recital in 1A almost exactly 13 years ago with 
Kendrick and Peter and Nick. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it was only like four or five years I missed Kendrick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when we were still young. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so it's really great. I'd like to thank uh, I'd like to thank uh, Michael Vorgita and Rob Hayes for having us here and for this wonderful series. Um, please give them a round of applause. I'd like to thank Maestro Numero Uno, Mr. Joshua Jackson. I'd like to thank uh, Jeanette Buocolo and everybody at Chamber Music America and the Doris Duke Foundation for making this possible. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife for supporting me and making this possible. Because, because, you know, as you know, when you have kids, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of understanding <laughs> to allow your husband to go into the room for hours and on end when, when you have to watch the kids and be, I'm working on something, please just let me work. But anyway, uh, I'd like to thank my beautiful children, Isabella and James. They're not listening now, but someday they might. Uh, they should be sleeping now, I hope. Uh, my wonderful mother and my wonderful grandmother. Um, and uh, that's it, I think. I'd like to thank Mr. Milne, but he's no longer with us. Um, well, anyway. <laughs> um, OK, well, uh, this last tune is called Vespers. And um, I'll read you the poem. But first, I'll say that the poem is not uh, the only inspiration for this. Because uh, when my daughter Isabella was just born, my wife used to sing her a little lullaby that she just made up. She would sing, um, it's time to sleep, it's time to sleep, fish and spoon and water spoon. And, um, well, I did something with that. But here's the poem. I hope you enjoy it. This is Vespers. Little boy kneels at the foot of the bed, droops on the little hands, little gold head. Hush, hush, whisper who dares. Christopher Robin is saying his prayers. God bless mummy, I know that's right. Wasn't it fun in the bath tonight? The cold so cold and the hot so hot. Oh, God bless daddy, I quite forgot. A little bit more, I can see Nanny's dressing gown on the door. It's a beautiful blue, but it hasn't a hood. Oh, God bless Nanny and make her good. Mine has a hood, and I lie in bed and pull the hood right over my head. And I shut my eyes and I curl up small, and nobody knows that I'm there at all. Oh, thank you, God, for a lovely day. And what was the other I had to say? I said, bless Daddy, so what can it be? Now I remember. God bless me. Little boy kneels at the foot of the bed. Drops on the little hand's little gold head. Hush, hush, whisper who dares. Christopher Robin is saying his prayers.
Patrick Cornelius. <laughs> While we're still young. Thank you. That last one was Vespers, and fittingly this uh, brings twilight to this edition of the Checkout Live, uh, but not without saying once again, job well done, Patrick Cornelius. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'd also like to say thank you to Rob Hayes and to Michael Borghita, also to Reggie Lofton and the staff at uh, Berkeley Video Services who help us to project this out uh, multimedia into the universe online at npr.org slash music and also we do that via concert window. Thanks also to Chad Blinman and the kids over at The Burn who help us out. Our music was recorded by our technical, our technical director. His name is David Tallickson. And uh, thanks also to Patrick Jaron Watananan at NPR Music. We do this a lot. Please check out the schedule. Guillermo Klein and some students from Berkeley and the core of the group known as Los Watchos uh, will be having some newly uh, featured work here once again on the Checkout Live. Thank you all for listening to member-supported WBGO Newark.